This video introduces the key elements of a systematic review. The learning objectives of this video are to become familiar with the most important methodological steps of systematic reviews and to understand the basic principles of meta-analyses and to be able to interpret forest plots. Systematic reviews have a highly standardized methodological design. Any systematic review starts with a concise and answerable research question. The second step is a priori definition of inclusion criteria for studies that are relevant to answer the research question. The third step is a systematic search of the scientific literature. During the fourth step, two investigators independently screen each record retrieved by the searches. The fifth step is a critical appraisal of the methods of included studies to determine the risk of bias. The final step is synthesis of the included studies. This step also includes a rating of the certainty of evidence. Let's have a closer look at each of these steps. The basis of any systematic review is one, or several, answerable research questions. In healthcare, research questions usually follow a specific structure, the PICO format. PICO is an acronym for Population, Intervention, Comparison, and Outcome. These are the elements a well-formed research question has to address. The population indicates a group of subjects sharing certain characteristics. The intervention is the action or exposure that affects this population. The comparison is an alternative action or exposure. It can also be a placebo of the intervention. The outcome defines how the success of the intervention is measured. After the research questions have been developed, explicit criteria about the inclusion and exclusion of studies have to be defined. These criteria will guide the selection of studies for the review. Defining inclusion criteria at the very beginning of the systematic review avoids bias. Instead of choosing only studies that support their hypothesis, the review authors have to select studies based on the rules they set in advance. The inclusion criteria follow the same format as the PICO question, but they are usually more detailed and can contain additional elements. This step has to be accomplished before the systematic literature search, but it requires in-depth knowledge of the topic and an understanding of what kind of studies are feasible and relevant to answer the research question. The literature search is one of the defining methods of a systematic review. The aim is to avoid selection bias caused by not considering all available evidence. This means it is necessary to get as close as possible to finding all studies that are relevant to the research question. To achieve this goal, the systematic search has to use a variety of information resources, for example, databases like PubMed, study registers like clinicaltrials.gov, or reference lists of known relevant publications. The search process has to be precisely documented to be transparent and reproducible. And, ideally, professional searchers such as research librarians or information specialists should be involved in developing and conducting the searches. A systematic literature search can never be 100% precise. In fact, it often retrieves thousands of irrelevant records. So, someone has to go through all of these abstracts and find the few relevant ones. A major problem with this task is that humans make mistakes. So, in systematic reviews, the screening of the literature is always done by at least two people independently 
to minimize human error. Studies that meet inclusion criteria will be included. But if screeners disagree about a decision, they need to find consensus by discussion or by bringing in a third investigator. Studies that meet inclusion criteria need to be critically appraised to assess whether bias could distort results. Bias is defined as a systematic error that is caused by problems with the study design or the conduction of a study. For example, poor randomization can cause bias. Lack of masking can also cause bias. Unfortunately, we cannot directly measure bias. We can only indirectly estimate the risk of bias of a study by critically appraising the study design and the study conduct. A study that was well designed and well conducted will have a low risk of bias. Several validated tools exist that can help reviewers assess the risk of bias in a standardized manner. Each of these tools pertains to a specific study design and cannot be used for other study designs. For example, the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool is specific for randomized controlled trials and cannot be used for observational studies. An important aspect is that risk of bias needs to be assessed for each relevant outcome because a study with a low risk of bias for one outcome could have a high risk of bias for another outcome. For example, lack of masking would not matter for mortality as an outcome, but could strongly distort assessments of pain relief. The final step of a systematic review is a synthesis of the evidence. This can be done narratively, that means summarizing study results as text, or quantitatively, which is called a meta-analysis, or a statistical summary of results. Not all systematic reviews can conduct meta-analyses, but any meta-analysis should be based on a systematic review. Meta-analyses statistically combine multiple studies. The graphical output of a meta-analysis is called a forest plot because it resembles a forest, albeit from an unusual perspective. How can we interpret a forest plot? The right-hand side of the figure presents the included studies. In this case, the meta-analysis included four studies. The black squares represent the point estimates of the included studies. The size of the square corresponds with the size of the study. In our meta-analysis, the study by Burke is slightly larger than the one by Moore. The horizontal lines depict the confidence intervals of the point estimates. The diamond at the bottom of the forest plot represents the pooled result of the meta-analysis with its confidence interval. The forest plot also highlights one of the strengths of meta-analyses, namely an increase in power and precision. The line here depicts the threshold of no effect. As you can see, the confidence intervals of all four individual studies cross this line, which means that all four studies do not have statistically significant findings. Pooling the four studies, however, renders statistically significant results. The confidence interval of the pooled estimate does not cross a line of no effect. Synthesizing the evidence in a systematic review also means that investigators provide an assessment of the certainty of evidence. That is, they present their judgment of how much confidence they have in the correctness of findings. To assess the certainty of evidence, they take different methodological aspects into consideration. For example, risk of bias, consistency of findings across results, the precision of estimates, and others. In the next video, we will explore assessing the certainty of evidence using GRADE.